Hi friends, today I'm going to discuss the Newton International Fellowship and this is one of the most prestigious postdoctoral fellowships out there. It is given by the United Kingdom or Britain and this is essentially given by the British Academy and the Royal Society of UK. This fellowship is given for international researchers to do research in the UK. So I'm going to discuss various aspects of this very important fellowship today. Now, of course, the fact that the name of Newton is linked with this fellowship is itself very prestigious. If you are anybody coming from any of the streams in the science and technology domain, particularly in physics and engineering, you know that Newton made enormous contributions to this field. So certainly if you look at any vehicle, whether it's a car, whether it's an aircraft, whether it's a ship, it's something which relies on Newton law. And most of the time we actually study Newton's law and Newton's contributions are actually probably even more important than the supposedly later contributions which were given out by Einstein. So that is something which you can keep in mind unless you are somebody who is dealing with speeds which are very high, which are close to the speed of light. Now let us look at some of the things which are required or considered in this fellowship. So first of all, it is valid for people in the STEM disciplines, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. They give some credence to diversity, so that's something which is important. And they try to get candidates with the widest background and uh, applicants from around all countries in the world are invited to apply here. So certainly geographical diversity is going to be important and also diversity in terms of different things such as gender and so on. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. Now, there are extra fellowships which are given to people who are applying from Switzerland and China. So there are some agreements with these countries where some money is being provided and you can get extra fellowships if you are somebody from these countries. Now, the fellowship is essentially of a two year duration. The maximum value is something like 300,000 pounds, which is dispersed in two years. The salary is typically given out by the host institution from the grants which they get. They pay you money for research expenses, for relocation and visa cost. And also you get stipend and some money for partner and children. So that's something which is very useful. The maximum grant which they have said actually can be exceeded if you justify it and again if the cost in terms of visa relocations and all are required by the particular applicant. Now one of the things to keep in mind is this fellowship is giving you various benefits. For example, it gives sickness, paternity, maternity leave, support of children and also there are various career development trainings which are available through the fellowship so essentially you can get training in terms of leadership in terms of public engagement in terms of science communication so during one of my visits to uk i actually found that many uk professors spend a lot of time in science communication so it's very often not sufficiently important to just do some research and publish it in journal papers but they also make sure that they write articles, they talk to journalists and try to explain the science which they are doing to the regular public. Now this is something which is very important to spread scientific temper among the regular people out there and make sure that the different inventions, different discoveries which are being made in the university are actually communicated out there. So I think this fact about science communication is very important. So if you ever get this Newton Fellowship then you can take advantage of some of this leadership training and science communication training also because I have found that UK people are very good in science communication. Now, if you get this Newton Fellowship, you can also apply later for alumni funding. And so what happens is that many times you build a network in the UK, you may know several professors, several researchers, several grad students who may later become professors. And then what happens is that you can come sometime later and take part in research. You can write joint papers with these people. You can establish further collaborations and agreement with them. Now let's look at how you can get this fellowship. So the requirement is that you should have a PhD. You should have less than seven years of postdoc and you should be currently outside the UK. This fellowship is essentially not there for UK citizens. Of course, you need to have very good English language skills. Remember, you are going to England or to the United Kingdom. So certainly you need to speak good English. You need to write good English and certainly you can have a British accent once you 
get this fellowship but it's not required to get it now the research is essentially in natural sciences so this essentially covers biology biomedical chemistry engineering math and of course physics because Newton as you know is one of the principal figures in physics you need to get a UK sponsor so this is going to be some professor who works at a UK university and you need to essentially write emails to various people you need to do some literature surveys and then figure out who are the people in UK who are the experts in your field and then write to them and determine this host so you need to come up with a project proposal with him or her I'm going to put some videos on the end screen about how to write project proposals for postdoctoral situations and also how to send an email to a professor so very often what you need to do is you need to put in your CV you need to attach maybe one or two journal publications and you need to write an email where you bring out what is the thing you want to do with them at the university and what are some of their skills which you can take advantage of and the joint collaboration you can do with them so sometime it may happen you work with an experimentalist you are a computational person so this would be complementary research or you can work with a computational person you are also a computational person and maybe you bring two different aspects to the table and together you get a better research than if you were each working alone so that is the basic idea behind research collaboration so this particular professor acts as your mentor he supports you during the process and you have to work on the project proposal with him or her so it's very important to keep in mind during your literature survey process right at the level when you are a phd student as to who are the different people around the world working in different areas so you should always figure out who are the people working in uk who are the people working in different countries so that you know who to approach later so literature survey is not just about writing a chapter in your thesis but it's also knowing the important people in your field now if you get the newton fellowship you are somebody who can go for the global talent visa so that's something which is going to let you get into the uk and what's going to happen after the application is being submitted is that it's going to go through a processing system where one of the four newton international fellowship panels are going to scrutinize the application they are going to look at the project proposal they are going to look at your technical competence they are going to look at the letters they are going to look at the publications and so on and then they are going to decide on who to award this particular fellowship to they are also going to provide or rather get further scrutiny done by a domain expert in the field so this is something which goes through several layers so do remember when you write a proposal it should be something which at the initial stage is something which normal people can understand which is a generalist can understand and then later you can delve deeper into your particular technical problem so the domain expert is going to look at this particular aspect about your technical problem so finally there is going to be a short list and finalization and the newton fellowship is going to be given out now some of the things they have mentioned are also that they have support specifically for people who are this able so they will provide some help in terms of filling out the application form in the selection process in interviews and so on so if you are somebody who has any physical problems then you can of course contact the newton fellow people about how they can help you in this particular situation now they have given various case studies about the newton fellowship on the web page i am going to provide a link to that on the video itself and also some of the things which are required or which are considered during the newton fellowship are publications in the phd and the postdoc so sometime you may be somebody who has done a phd and maybe done a first postdoc somewhere for a couple of years so that's going to certainly strengthen you if you are considering this as your second postdoc you need to write a very good proposal in conjunction with the postdoc supervisor they also look at diversity so they are certainly going to value different candidates from different countries around the world particularly countries which are not very well represented in the science and technology system and also they are going to give certain advantages to women and to different type of people as the case may be now the supervisor and the university also plays an important role here i would give you a hint that do not only apply to the top universities in uk so there are some people who only apply to cambridge oxford and imperial college 
and they get rejects now it's not that they are going to ever tell you that the reject was because they got too many applicants applying to the same college but this is something which you will be able to figure out from your own thinking that they would like some kind of geographical distribution around the uk which is going to different universities so that is something to keep in mind so i would say that do not just apply to for example the universities in the english part of the united kingdom but also consider wales and scotland because they also have good universities out there and in general one advice about uk would be that if you are going to uk for phd or postdoc try to avoid staying in very big cities or universities near very big cities because these places tend to be expensive they also tend to be somewhat prone to crime and some of other problems so i would say always try to stay in the universities which are located in small towns or in small places where you can take advantage of the nice and beautiful english or uk countryside out there so this was my take on the newton fellowship of course it will provide you with the name which will stick on your cv for the rest of your life and it will greatly add your marketability for any faculty position and who knows if you stay in uk for 2 years you may even acquire a uk accent